What's up there, DV8 family? You guys, I'm excited to bring you worship tonight from this beautiful backyard. And y'all, I want you to know, I am just so excited to invite you to worship. You may hear dogs barking, you may hear a bunch of highway noises, but I want you to remember that Jesus is our healer. The word says that by his stripes, we are healed. So just be encouraged and reminded as we worship him together tonight. Let's worship.
You're my portion, Jesus. I believe you're my portion. I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Hey there, Deviate family. This is Pastor Forrest. I'm coming to you from my gray chair. And you guys, before we begin, I want to let y'all know something tonight. I've been so encouraged by the way that you've allowed yourselves to be used by the Lord in just encouraging others online, through Instagram, through other platforms, through sharing scripture verses, and just being a light and a presence to those in this digital platform the Lord's allowed us to use. And I want y'all to know that I'm rooting for you in all of that. Should you need anything, if you have a prayer request, if you want to let me know of a life update, whatever it may be, know that I'm available to you and I love you. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I also want you guys to know that tonight is a special night. The reason why is we are introducing a brand new series with the Easter season coming underway. And it's going to be called Following Jesus. Following Jesus. We're going to be following Jesus, looking at all of the important things that we can learn from his character. The things he does. The things he says. As they affect our lives and, and our desires to know him more and to be his followers. And so tonight, I want to begin by asking you a question. Have you guys ever wondered, what is Jesus thinking? What is he doing in the days and weeks prior to his crucifixion? What is Jesus really stressing in his life? What are the important things that he's trying to make, that he's trying to do? What is he doing? What is he doing with his time? And you guys, I want to read to you a story. Uh, but before I do that, I want us to think a little bit about something. Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified. The scripture's clear that Jesus understood that he was going to be crucified. He knew he was going to be whipped. He knew he was going to be arrested. He was going to be tortured. He was going to be hung on a cross. And I don't know about you guys, but if I had all of that against me, if that was coming up in my future, I'd probably choose the quarantine life, right? I would choose to sit and chill and not get out and go face those types of things. But yet Jesus had a mission. Jesus had a task at hand that he knew needed to be completed even in those days and weeks prior to his crucifixion. So I want to read a story to you guys tonight. This story is about a man named Lazarus who was a personal friend of Jesus. In fact, Jesus was friend with Lazarus and he was friends with Lazarus's two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha had sent news to Jesus as Jesus was out of town. And they let him know that Lazarus, their brother, was sick. And Jesus was so troubled because scripture says Jesus loved these three. He, he had a very strong relationship with the three of them. But Jesus was doing his ministry. And, and while troubled, he actually stayed where he was for two more days. And I want to pick up there. Um, Jesus had waited to leave to visit Bethany where Lazarus had lived. And it seems that Lazarus has actually passed away by the point that Jesus arrived in Bethany. And I want you guys to, to pick up here with me at Martha's reaction uh, to Jesus's arrival. This is John chapter 11, verse 17. It says this, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Wow. So there's a few things I want to note from this passage. I, I, many scholars would look at the, the details and, and the, the history in that passage we just read, and many would actually agree that that was close to two weeks before the crucifixion of Jesus. And so to answer that question we asked a second ago, what was Jesus doing with his time prior to his crucifixion? Well, he was out ministering. He ended up making his way to Bethany and he comforted his friends upon the news of their brother's death. He is selflessly out and about thinking about those around him and the hurt that they're feeling, trying to provide comfort. And it's pretty remarkable to me. In fact, he, he loves and clearly believes that there's still work 
and there's still things to be done. There's still love to give, even leading to his crucifixion. I think that's so powerful. And there's a few things I want to talk to you about from this passage. You see, Martha understood that Jesus had the ability to save Lazarus. However, you know, she was still confined to this humanly timeline. You remember she said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And the amazing thing, the, the amazing thing is, is that Jesus was well aware of Lazarus' situation. You may remember me mentioning that upon hearing of Lazarus' sickness, Jesus actually stayed where he was for two more days. In fact, Scripture says that um, by the time of Jesus' arrival to Bethany, Lazarus had already been dead and in the tomb for four days. But, you know, I think it's important to note that Jesus was operating under a different timeline, not of a humanly timeline. That's why my first idea tonight is this. Our late is often God's on time. Our late is often God's on time. You see, Jesus understood the pain and the death of his friend Lazarus would bring to those around. And, and, and Jesus understood that while Lazarus' death took place on a humanly timeline, Jesus understood his timeline. In fact, in verse 4 of this passage, Jesus said this about Lazarus' sickness. This is prior. It says in verse 4, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So Jesus knew that while Mary and Martha thought Jesus was four days late, that he was still on time. Jesus knew he was still on time. And you know, I wonder, maybe you may be thinking that God is late to the party. Maybe in all of this mess we've been seeing these last few weeks, you may be thinking the Lord is late, or maybe he's missed your situation, or he's not aware of what you're going through or what's going on, that he's just late to it all. But I want to remind you that in those situations, in your moment of need, don't forget our late is often God's on time. Our late is often God's on time. And I want to go on to read in verse 41, where Jesus, he's now made it to Mary and Martha. Scripture says that Jesus has actually been weeping over the death of Lazarus as he's entered uh, the tomb area. He's just wept and mourned his friend. And uh, I want to read here where Jesus has asked them to remove Lazarus' stone. Um, it says this in verse 41. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. You know, I love this because we see the authority of Jesus as he looks to God the Father, and he calls Lazarus out of the tomb. And there's something so interesting that I want you to think about tonight. Do you ever wonder this? By raising Lazarus up from the dead, do you realize that Jesus is foreshadowing his own resurrection? This is two weeks prior. He's raising Lazarus out from this tomb, and he is foreshadowing what would, what would happen, what would take place so soon after. Here are Jesus' words from verse 24. And he's reminding Martha of who he is amidst her brother's death, Lazarus. He says this, Lazarus, he says in verse 24, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So that was prior to even Jesus entering into the tomb of Lazarus. He was already talking about the fact that he is the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus knew that his resurrection was only the beginning. And that his raising of Lazarus was a reminder to those present and to those who would come to know Jesus in those years and, and days following the resurrection, that they too will experience eternal life all for the glory of Jesus. And that's why my final idea tonight is this. Even when we face moments of hardship or pain or, or death even, we can remember this. No matter what circumstance, Jesus gets the glory. No matter what circumstance, Jesus gets the glory. You see, not every difficult circumstance that we face will always make a lot of sense to us. We may not always see a victorious result in our time or in our timeline, but one thing we do know is that God can use our pain. He can use our trouble and turn it into something that glorifies him. And we know that we will face trouble in the world. In fact, I'd say Mary and Martha were deeply troubled by the death of their brother Lazarus. In fact, we see that Jesus was troubled. Scripture says that Jesus wept over Lazarus. 
Lazarus. And you need to know that your God hurts when you hurt. But I also want you to know that Jesus knew that he ultimately had won the battle over sin. He'd won the battle over hell and, and even the grave. And it may seem painful what you're going through right now, but you need to know that Jesus is always right on time because when he's four days late, he's still on time. And remember this, no matter the circumstance, Jesus gets the glory. No matter what you face in this life, no matter what you see on an outward level or on your humanly timeline, there is a timeline that God is operating under and he is right on time and he is going to turn these circumstances into instruments of his glory in a way that only he can do it. And he's gonna do it in your life so if you, as you trust in him, as you put him first and as you love him in all that you do. So you guys, I thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope this has been encouraging and know that I love you. You guys are the best. Peace.